Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Hicks. I'm your professor for Business Administration 602 Fundamentals of Economics and Statistics. And what I'm going to do with this first class, this first 15 or 20 minute class, is going to uh, I'm going to explain the course to you, how it fits into your program, how I'm going to deliver the course and what you need. And then I'm going to end with a little bit of a, an explanation of how I uh, view this course as part of your instructional process going through the MBA program. Um, so to begin, this is an asynchronous online course. It's designed to teach you, uh, catch you up on things that you may not know about economics and statistics. Some of you will know most of this material. Many of you will not. For some of you, it will be resurrecting lost skills. Uh, what are you going to need? Uh, you're going to need, um, obviously, a computer so that you can watch me online as you're doing now. Um, you're going to need uh, the capacity to write in a Word or similar program. You're going to need a PDF file to read the, the, the textbooks, which I'll talk about in a minute. And you're going to need uh, spreadsheets as well. Um, you don't need any other statistical software, although I'll introduce and show you some of those things. Um, there are the textbooks are, are open source. They're free online text available at OpenStax. That's Stax with, a, with an X.org. Uh, one is the introductory statistics, and the other one is the principles of microeconomics. Both of these classes, uh, are, both of these textbooks have links in the syllabus. You can go directly to them. Um, in order to grade you, I'm going to give two exams, a 45% and a 55% final, a midterm and final. Um, and and I'll, I will talk you through what I'm looking for in these. This is the first time this class has been taught at Ball State and so there's no examples floating around for you to observe. Um, the way I'm going to deliver this class is in really three components. The first is going to be a lecture. It'll either be me talking directly to you like I'm doing now, which I'm going to try to keep to short blocks. 15-20 minute block is what I'm aiming at. I go over some, I go under others, but the goal is to uh, make the listening to a professor online more digestible. The second type of instruction will be me talking over a piece of software, either a slideshow or a spreadsheet or a statistical program for you to see what, what uh, uh, we're doing in a different format. And so it'll still be me talking, but it won't, you won't have to stare at my talking head. It'll be something that you're going to have to execute or observe at some point. And with that, again, I'm going to try to keep those to 15 to 20 minute blocks. And then the third framework uh, for instruction is going to be invited instruction, uh, which is really I've looked pretty heavily for people who give TED Talks or YouTube videos or instructional content or MOOCs that are designed to provide course material similar to what I'm talking through um, or complementary to what I'm talking through. And so I'll assign that for you to look at as a complement to the material that you're learning right now. Um, so those are the three things that we'll do. There'll be some innovations. I have a light board that I use for drawing graphics when we get primarily to the economics component of this. And so We'll be playing around with some different delivery techniques. I am sensitive to the difficulty of doing some of this online course and how a you know asynchronous hour-long lecture can be really brutal. Uh, because you're not here, we don't have to go through all of the things that we would normally talk about in the COVID environment that we're in. You know, the university is uh, takes very seriously the challenges of COVID and wearing masks, you don't obviously have to wear them at home when you're taking this class or sitting around taking it. But the other things are pretty straightforward. I expect you not to cheat on a graded assignment, which is not really a big issue here. Um, you can get te technical information um, on Canvas or elsewhere. Uh, the syllabus has uh, links to tech clips to get you through the most common questions and then all kinds of questions about how to do online courses and Canvas community for students so that you can get into this. Because it's asynchronous, we're not going to have a lot of chat material. Um, I have classes from around the, the students in this class from around the world, so it doesn't do a lot of good to, to do that. 
Um, if you're a disabled student and have difficulty with the technology, please uh, you know, get to make a contact with the Students and Disabilities Office. Uh, you can also contact me directly with what you need to do. Sometimes there's a lag between you contacting them and they getting to me, but if you contact me right away and say, you know, Dr. Hicks, I, I need uh, something extra um, to complete this course, um, I'm happy to accommodate, so just let me know. Uh, and the syllabus contains other information. Um, a couple of things that I think are important uh, in the MBA program are assurance of learning. Uh, we have uh, a program, an integration program here, where we try to make sure every class explicitly talks about you know, how we're doing, how we're addressing global awareness and cultural sensitivity, leadership, integration, decision making, and ethics. And so economics and statistics are inherently global discipline. Everybody, um, you know, uses the tools of economics and statistics in business um, and just the desire to uh, maximize utility in a resource constrained environment is a universal human desire. Um, and so understanding economics helps us understand those sorts of things about the world in which we live. It's an inherently global enterprise. Um, leadership and initiative. So there's no successful organization that I know of that has a formal definition of leadership, but that does not say being technically competent is not part of that definition. Um, so if you're a young army officer, being technically competent in your field is a primary requirement of leadership. If you're a lawyer and you own a legal firm, the technical competence of the legal profession is part of that. And so this is the technical competence that we provide in this class is a fundamental element of leadership everywhere. Um, economics is the science uh, that underlies all the other professional business instruction that you get. Um, and so if you are a marketing major, marketing is a new discipline. It was really founded after an, an economics paper in the 1940s laid out something called the Dorfman-Steiner conditions, which are optimal advertising expenditures, right? If you're a finance prof, you're basing everything you do on economic theory of the consumer and firm. And so the instruction that you're going to get is going to be based on, on economic theory. Um, the management disciplines are driven by economic theory. The best known management professor in America, Michael Porter, is a PhD economist, microeconomist, who took the findings from industrial economics to business to explain to businesses how that they work. You know, information flows that are part of ISM or logistics firms are the fundamental work is Akerlof's informational asymmetry. Um, and so, and almost all operations management uses the early work by Cobb and Douglas, two economists uh, who worked in the earlier part of the 20th century, up to the mid part of the 20th century. And then in decision making, of course, uh, profit maximization is the fundamental production decision for businesses. Um, that's an insight derived from economics. Utility maximization is the fundamental decision for households and, and, and governments. And so this insights derived from economic theory. We'll talk about that when we get to the economics class. And of course, ethical decision making. Um, you know, the father of economics, Adam Smith, wrote two very uh, important books. Uh, the one that most of you have heard of is Wealth of Nations, um, which talks about market processes and perfect competition. Uh, describes a uh, you know, wide range of economic activity from progressive taxation to scale economies in uh, the division of labor. Uh, but his earlier book, Theory of Moral Sentiments, lays out a framework for all of the later work. And so economics is inherently an ethical discipline in the sense that we are measuring and trying to understand people when they trade, which is an inherently win-win uh, function, right? Um, and so when we talk about the role of collusion and market power, how we might be able to uh, address that through public policy or um, information asymmetries, all of those sorts of things are economic uh, theory at, at play.
So the class is going to consist of 14 weeks of instruction. The first week is going to be modeling with data. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the types of data, the methods of data display, the use of summary statistics to describe them. Um, then we're going to talk about thinking about data like a science. Where do we get the data? How do we understand the data? What do we, how do we describe it? What sort of sample size are we looking at? What does the distribution of data uh, mean for the type of uh, techniques of statistics that we use. We're also going to talk then about creating a testable hypothesis, the science of doing statistical analysis in business and economics. Uh, we're going to show you how to build a testable hypothesis and how to reject it. And we're going to explain to you why we don't accept hypotheses, we only reject them. Uh, so we're going to measure the signal to noise ratio in data I'm going to show you how these sorts of things deal with one another. We're going to do multivariate analysis uh, so that we can deal with bias in research like a scientist. Then we're going to shift to economics after four weeks into how markets work. So we're going to talk about basic perfect competition supply and demand. We're going to define a demand function. And the next week we're going to use data to testing demand in a multivariate model. And again, we're only going to do this very briefly because you'll be entering in later classes in more detail in these areas, but I don't want them to be a surprise to you. Then we're going to talk about how governments regulate and apply benefit cost on a marginal basis, right? So they're using marginal analysis to do so. We're going to talk about elasticities. That's an empirical way of measuring the response of consumers or households or government or business to changes in price or, or other uh, in, you know, income, other factors. And then the ninth week, we're going to measure it. So we're going to go back to using some statistics along the way. And then for the last five or six uh, weeks, we're going to do, um, you know, straight to theory of the firm. So we're going to study production and costs, competition, oligopoly, uh, natural monopolies. And then we're going to shift to, in that four or five week period, to macroeconomics, the overall economy. We're going to talk about what GDP and growth and unemployment is. We'll talk about data in those areas. Then we're going to talk about fiscal and regulatory policy, how that plays out at the state, local, and, and federal level. And then we're going to end on money and banking and the structure of monetary policy. So that's the course. That's what we're doing in, in this instruction. Let me tell you a little bit about myself and how I come down on this. So I've been here at Ball State for 12, 13 years now. Um, I am, work in the Center for Business and Economic Research. It's a research center with four uh, uh, researchers uh, there who are doing essentially full-time analysis uh, in, in, in focused on state and local public policy on where business and, and economic activity locates fiscal policy, which is tax and spending policy, health economics, and rural sociology. And, and you can go to our website and take a look at what we do there and, and how we try to influence uh, the world through our research. Before that, I worked for three years at the Air Force Institute of Technology in their cost analysis and financial management program. Um, the five years before that, I worked at the Center for Business and Economic Research at Marshall University. The year before that, I worked at the Center for Business and Economic Research at University of Tennessee. I had just finished my PhD there and was able to stay for a year to do work. Um, and I will say, I, uh, I entered graduate school later than any of my colleagues here at Ball State, um, certainly in the economics or college of business. Um, I began in my early 30s. Um, before that, I spent eight years as an Army infantry officer. Um, and uh, I had, But I do have an undergraduate degree in economics and master's and PhD in economics. Um, uh, and so I appreciate, I think, better than most the challenges of returning to a graduate program after doing something that took you out of the classroom. Uh, you know, being out of the classroom means that many of the skills of study and the content that you may have done uh, very well with and mastered several years before are rusty and stale. This class will give you an opportunity to knock the rust off and get ready for some of the more rigorous courses that we come to down the road. Right now, there's 22 of you enrolled in this class. Um, I expect all of you to do well in the class. This is a graduate program, so we usually grade A, B, C, and F. And I have very rare Fs. Uh, and so 
I'm really looking for students to do well here and, and move on into the next program. And so the way this will work is um, we're done this first segment and I'll have posted the instructional content for the first week uh, on the uh, Canvas setting. And so you can go directly to those and watch those. I encourage you not to get too far ahead or too far behind with the, cl with the class. It's better to you know, have the material roughly at the same time. So I'm not going to prevent that, but I'm not going to encourage being too far out of, sync, out of sync. Finally, if you're having difficulty with this class, if you have family issues, if you have work issues, please let me know. Um, again, I think uh, we do a pretty good job of understanding the challenges for graduate students who are doing this work remotely, and I want to be sensitive to those. And it's just always better to talk to a prof early rather than late. So I've had it all. If you've got a sick family member, if you're if you're changing jobs, if you're going on a military deployment, if you're scheduled to uh, deliver a baby in December, you know, let me know now so you know we can shift around to accommodate your schedule. Uh, that's a fairly easy thing to do, particularly the more I information that I have about it and the earlier that I have it. And with that, I'll see you in the next class.